Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. And uh, today I just wanted to talk with you about something I saw on uh, Yanasa TV. It's a YouTube channel a guy who's a rancher and he talks about current events and things like that. And it's a good channel. You should go check him out if you haven't. If you haven't, if you're not subscribed to it. He's a smart guy. So anyway, um, he was talking about this this other mass shooter that happened out in Colorado, or, or it didn't happen, I guess, actually. Um, apparently, the guy was all kitted up, all SWAT teamed out, you know, with all his stuff and everything, and he, um, I guess, committed suicide in a bathroom stall, and before he did, he wrote something on the wall that said something like, I'm not a killer, I just wanted to get into the caves. I don't know what he's talking about, I'm not sure. If I can find the story, I'll, I'll link it down below, but the point that, that he brought up that I thought was interesting and, and maybe relative to the conversations we've had lately is that uh, the, the story about it focused almost exclusively on the fact that he was wearing body armor, that he had plates, that you know he had all this this gear and this stuff and he made a good point that I, I think is probably relevant it, that it was it was like they were starting to pivot towards the gear and towards the idea that people normal people shouldn't own this stuff well I mean, there's been bills in the past that have been introduced in trying to keep people from having body armor and that kind of thing. But, you know, my take on it is is that if you if you own a firearm, then you should own body armor, right? Like, bullets go both ways. And, you know, if you're ever in a situation where you have to go into a situation where you feel like you might need a firearm, well, then you should also be putting on your vest. And, you know, the thing for most people, you know, the the thing that most people would worry about, you know, isn't some high-speed tactical thing. It's really the bump, go, bump in the night, you know. Something happens at night and you get up and you get out of bed real quick and you got to go down and check something out because you think somebody's stirring around in your house. Well, it'd be nice to be able to have some armor that you could throw on real quick so that you didn't have to deal with you know, getting shot yourself, you know, and, uh, and, and there's two different types of armor you can get, right? You can get the, uh, level four plates, level three or level four plates, which will stop rifle rounds. And then you can also get the, um, like level two or level three, a, uh, soft vest, soft plates that, will stop pistol rounds and shotgun and you know that kind of thing maybe like 22 long rifle perhaps um, so I just brought that up to you because as you know I recently became affiliate with National Body Armor um, you can use a discount code reality survival to save you 25% site-wide it might be a good idea to get some of that stuff before the you know they pivot and and start making that stuff hard to come by hard to get or start targeting these companies that are selling this stuff with ESG stuff and you know pushing companies out of business that kind of thing um, it, I think it's entirely plausible plausible and or possible <laughs> that we might see some sort of a pivot like that over the next few years um, I mean who knows who knows exactly? I, it's it's hard to say, but um, I think it's a good idea. Given the civil rest, the, the likelihood of civil rest increasing, and where we're going with society, the fact that you know, at some point over the next few years, we're probably going to be rolling into a world war or an expanded regional conflicts or multi-front conflicts, however you want to put it. Um, chances of, of civil unrest here at home increasing 
are pretty significant. And, you know, I, I think that every household who can legally do so should own a firearm. And everybody who owns a firearm should also have some body armor. Now, National Body Armor has this t-shirt. It's, it's basically like a t-shirt with the carriers. And you put a panel in front and a panel in back. And you can, and they're, and they're semi-flexible. You know, they're not as flexible as a t-shirt, but, you know, they're flexible. You can wear them. And it's very low profile. So if you had to go down and, uh, you know, investigate something in your house or something at night, you can toss the shirt on, you can grab your weapon, and you can go see what's going on. Uh, but also, if you still just had to go to work and you had to go downtown, which is where I'm going today, I got to go downtown, which sucks because I hate going downtown. Um, but if you got to go downtown, you got to, you know, go in some place where there's a lot of riots and civil unrest and they're stopping traffic and people are getting carjacked and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, as we get closer to the election cycle, that's likely to happen. Um, you can wear that body armor underneath whatever you're wearing, you know, at least, at least till you get to your workplace, you know, or whatever. Um, and that's going to give you a little, little degree of protection as well, you know? So I think that I, I try to keep these, these recommendations that I make to you guys real, um, because I'm not, I'm not into the fear porn or the doomsday porn or any of that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't think that the world's going to end and I don't think that this is, you know, the country ending, you know, SHTF situation or anything like that. But I do think that over the next few years, you know, between I'm reading, uh, Neil Strauss's new book, you know, his, the fourth turning, but he just did a, a re redo of it and he's explaining it more and, and more in, in depth. And, uh, I think we are entering a crisis period, you know, and that, that'll probably be from 2025 to 2030, give or take. So, uh, I think it makes sense to do a few things to get ready for that, that upheaval period, you know, where there's a lot of uh, crisis. If you guys haven't read The Fourth Turning, the book The Fourth Turning, you really should. Uh, the first one, it's by Strauss and Howe. The first one was. The second one, I think, is just Neil Strauss, if I remember right. But very good book. Talks about, you know, uh, sociological cycles that called the saclium every... 20 or every 80 years total we have um, basically a big crisis period that then results in a long period of peace and then a, an awakening period and then um, and then it kind of goes back into a turmoil and all that kind of thing so and it's these cycles and every for the last 500 years of history in the anglo-american sphere we have followed this pattern for good or for ill. We don't know 100% why, uh, but it's just a generational thing. And uh, those cycles all line up to the fact that we're entering that period here pretty soon. I think that that time frame makes a lot of sense and it, and it, and it um, is consistent with a lot of things that we're seeing around the world. The fact that the U.S. is opening bases in you know, the Philippines and they're signing agreements to open them and stuff like that. There's people are projecting forward and they're they're anticipating that there's going to be wider conflicts, wider problems, and so uh, I think that we should do the same in our preparations and trying to get ready. You know, make sure you got your food, make sure you got your water, self-defense, the ability to defend yourself. You know, protect yourself, protect your home. All those things are be important. So anyway, guys, don't forget to live the six P's: proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe.